I'll start by saying my sister, Jasmine, and I weren't close growing up. We didn't dislike each other, but we were very different people and didn't communicate if we didn't have to. I've been with my husband since I was a teen and we married last year. Due to the global issue, it was a small wedding, but it was still very expensive and extravagant. My husband and I both have great jobs and plan on being child-free, so we have a nice house, good cars, and plenty of disposable income. I couldn't ask for a better man to spend my life with. Jasmine has been with her girlfriend, Abby, for around two years. Abby is a lovely woman, and they seem very happy together. A month ago, Jasmine told me she was planning on asking Abby to marry her. I was thrilled to hear that, and I knew Abby would be stoked. However, Jasmine then handed me a piece of paper that had all the costs she wanted me to cover. In total, it came up to $50,000 for the engagement alone. I firmly told her that I was happy to help, but I'm not her personal bank, and if she wanted to get engaged, she would have to find another way to get the money or cut back on expenses. She insisted I pay for at least the ring, $35,000. I held my ground and said no. She left and didn't talk to me for about a month. I assumed it was over until she suddenly called me and asked if I had the ring yet. She reminded me that the engagement was tomorrow and I had agreed to get the ring. When I refused, she told me that her life would be ruined if I didn't stop being selfish and do my part. I went to the shop that sold the ring she wanted, but they didn't have it, no surprise. I picked an extremely cheap engagement ring, which was only $100 and was visibly fake. I dropped it over at her house and not long after I got home, she started calling me. When I picked up, she screamed at me over the line, saying I was the most selfish person she'd ever met and that she'd rather die than propose with that garbage. I hung up on her, but it wasn't long before my parents started calling and telling me to stop being a brat. Their logic was, because I could afford it, I should buy it. They told me I was an idiot who didn't care for my family. I believe I shouldn't let them walk over me just because they want what I have. Not the idiot. What the heck? Why would OP need to buy a ring? Why can't the sister ask the parents? Why can't sister save up? She just handed you a piece of paper with a price you have to pay for her damn wedding. What? Dude, don't even think about paying. This is ridiculous. Truly ridiculous. Because obviously sibling has no kids, a rich husband, and good jobs. Therefore, sister gets to piggyback on that like all socially well-adjusted people are known to do. I'd have laughed my butt off if my sister handed me a list of demands. This whole situation is nuts. You need to put your foot down about this. Do you want to deal with this crap for the rest of your life? Your family sounds greedy and entitled. People like that don't stop unless you make them stop. I think it's because no one in my family is used to large amounts of money, and now they've seen my husband and me as nothing but an opportunity for them. It still shocks me a bit how much they expect my success to be theirs automatically. Sorry, but I'm LOLing big time right now on how entitled your sister and parents are with your money. Block the calls. Ignore them. If your sister can't even afford to get engaged, then she shouldn't. Lord knows what sort of wedding, new home, new car you will be expected to buy for them. LOL. Now buy something nice for yourself to celebrate their engagement. Everyone's the idiot here. Your sister is a spoiled brat. Who spoiled her? Take a guess. It isn't you. Don't be a doormat and stop spending any money on her or your ungrateful family. The fake-looking ring was a low blow. What an absolute waste of money, and it's not even for you or your relationship. Cut your family off. They clearly don't respect you and think they're entitled to your money. My girlfriend Jen, 19 female, and I, 19 male, are both done with school for the summer. She has a brother, young teen, and sister, tween. When she and I go somewhere like the beach or park, she wants to bring her siblings along. She said they'll spend the whole summer sitting around their house if she doesn't take them to fun places. Jen isn't working right now, but I am, so if we do something that costs money, I pay. Sometimes it's annoying because her siblings don't say thank you or show any appreciation and act like it's my job or expected. Jen doesn't want me to tell their parents when they misbehave. Parents ask because she thinks they won't want to spend time with her. So basically they can be as annoying as they want and nothing happens. Anyway, yesterday after work we went to the beach. They weren't listening and were acting up the whole time. We all brought a bottle of water along. I finished mine before we left. Both kids still had most of their water left. When we were in the car, I said I'd be right back and ran to the pavilion to get a soda from the vending machine. I got myself a Mountain Dew and Jen a lemonade. They were like four bucks each, so I definitely wasn't buying the kids one. When I returned to the car, I gave her the lemonade and she asked if I got them sodas. I said, 
No, they still have water left and I'm not rewarding their bad behavior. Besides, last time they had soda, they left them back there half drunk. My car isn't their garbage can. She gave them some of her lemonade. After we dropped them off, she said it's not my job to parent them. I said, I wasn't parenting them, but I wasn't buying them a reward for acting up all day. She said you couldn't withhold food and drink from a kid when they misbehave. I said, they both still had water. If they were thirsty, they had something to drink. She said, you know all kids will want soda over a water. That meant basically, ha ha, you don't get none. You were being a bully to kids. I said, when I was a kid and misbehaved, my parents wouldn't get me a treat. She said, yeah, your parents, but you're not their parent. I said, no, but it's my money, not our money, and gesture between her and me, and I didn't want to spend eight bucks on sodas they wouldn't finish. She said I was being an idiot and wanted to go home, so I took her home. I don't have kids, so maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't get rewarded for being a brat when I was a kid. Am I the idiot for not getting them a soda? Not the idiot. Your girlfriend is the idiot for acting entitled to your hard-earned money. She or her parents can pay if she wants stuff bought for her siblings. And 100% you two are the adults in this situation and therefore can enforce the rules on the kids. So basic manners aren't too much to ask. Usually, babysitters make money to spend time with kids. This poor dude is losing money. Is he sure his girlfriend isn't pocketing money her parents gave her for her siblings? I'd also start telling the actual parents the truth about how the kids are behaving. She's right, you're not their parents, so there's no reason you need to have them tag along anytime you want to do something with your girlfriend. You need to reconsider if you want to be in this relationship and lay down an ultimatum. No more kids tagging along on your dates. You certainly shouldn't pay a dime for them. If she doesn't like that, you should consider ending things because it doesn't sound like her family situation is compatible with you. When your girlfriend says you're not their parents, she's so close to getting the point. So close. They're using you and taking advantage of you. Stand up for yourself. My spouse and I have been struggling to find a home. We've outgrown our tiny apartment. We have a young child and want another, but we can't afford a bigger place. We save but cannot catch up to the pace of house prices. My mother and her husband owned three homes, soon to be four. While she heavily relied on her parents financially, she's not been there for me in that way. Throughout the global issue, unemployment, high medical bills for our premature baby, and numerous other unfortunate expenses, she never offered any help. She and her husband, who considers him my child's grandfather, own five cars, and periodically they abandon the cars at one of their vacation homes to look like someone is home all the time. They planned on doing this with an additional car recently, one that was only a few years old. I expressed my hurt that they were planning to abandon yet another car while they knew we were struggling financially. Housing costs have become so difficult that I applied for a job in a much cheaper state, 12 hours away, a couple of months ago. I told her about this, and although she's very close with her grandchild, she just said she'd visit a lot. It felt like, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Ultimately, a relative, who only has one home, intervened and offered to help us in the event we could no longer afford rent after the upcoming increase, expected to be an increase of around 800 a month. One month after I told her about applying for the job out of state, she told me they got a beach place. I thought she meant a rental at first. It materialized that no, they purchased a home on the beach. She expected me to be thrilled. She even said they did it for us, me and my spouse and child. She meant that we would enjoy going there, but it's not a kid-friendly place. The price of the home is in the same price range as the sort of home we would like to buy, but that we've been priced out of over the last couple of years. This hurt me and felt like it was a slap in the face. Well, before closing, I told her I would not be able to go to their new vacation home, they have two others, because it would be too upsetting for me. It's a highly frivolous expense in my view when they already own two vacation homes in the same state as the new one. I don't feel entitled to their money, but neither do I want a front row seat to them wasting it while we struggle. I would have zero problems if they used this money to pay off their existing mortgage or save for retirement or pretty much anything other than a third vacation home that is the cost of the house we're hoping to be able to buy. Like the abandoned car, it feels like money is just being thrown away. And I know they can do what they want with their money, but I don't want to be in that house knowing they preferred having it to helping their grandchild and me. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. They are wasting their money. To park expensive cars in front of vacation homes is just stupid. 
Do they clean it, move them regularly so it really looks like they live there? They can do with their money what they want, but to go, I can't help you, I have no money, but do this and boast with a vacation home when OP needs to move 12 hours because she doesn't want to be homeless, it's insensitive. And maybe OP's mother forgot that a normal working person can't go on vacation all the time. They live in two different worlds. I'm wholeheartedly saying not the idiot, but man, I thought our situation was unfortunate. This is way worse. Everyone I know has their house because family help with the down payment or loan. My parents can't do it for any of us, which I understand because they had three kids and didn't have a bunch of money lying around to pay for three down payments. My husband's mother, on the other hand, wants him to be thrilled about the home she buys and flips. He once asked if she could get him a loan, and she said she didn't want to risk not getting her next flip loan. We can afford payments, but with the nature of work, we can't get a home loan. So yeah, I don't expect money or help from people either. But when your blood relatives, knowing your kids or whatever, are in a tough spot, they 100% do not give a crap about your flip or vacation home. So spend the money how you want. I don't care. I don't have to jump up and down for you. My husband, 34, and I, 32 female, just had our first child today. We were in the delivery room together and all was going well. I was in a lot of pain, but he was supportive. The midwife was asking us questions about the baby, etc., in between contractions to help me ease my mind. Then she asked if we were excited about the pregnancy being over, and I said that yes, because it's been hard for me. My husband snorted and said, for me too, she was so difficult. The midwife tried to change the subject, but I asked my husband what he meant by that, and he said that he was happy it was over and he will get his wife back and the hormonal mess is over. I was so hurt and told him to please just leave the room. He said he's not going anywhere because his child is being born here. I yelled at him to get the heck out and he was angry, called me an idiot for making him miss his kid's birth and stormed off. He hasn't been back to see our daughter. He's supposed to come later today. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. You totally overreacted and deprived him of seeing his child born. Your behavior that day was very likely the kind of over-the-top emotional reaction he hopes to stop now. Our bodies go through some significant swings because of hormones, but that's not a blanket excuse to act however we want. OP, I'm not in this man's head, but I think he was joking when he said, the hormonal mess is over. I don't think he truly meant any harm. Besides, he was supportive up until this point, right? You just prove your husband's point by flying off the handle and showing your reaction doesn't match the situation. It's unbelievable the number of people saying that she should just tolerate whatever he says because watching someone else give birth is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for a man. If it meant that much to him, he could have behaved like a supportive partner and kept his stupid, insulting and demeaning jokes to himself. Pregnancy is hard and any man who can't give his wife the respect she deserves for what she's done shouldn't be in the delivery room. Not the idiot, full stop. You get to choose who's in the delivery room. Just like with intimacy, you can always change your mind too. Couples counselling, as soon as you're healed up and are more comfortable physically. Because, for one thing, the hormonal mess isn't over. And secondly, wait for him to make pregnancy and birth all about him. Wait, so you gave birth by now, recovered from that somehow, found time to write this post and he hasn't been back? I'm so sorry, but if this guy genuinely cared about you or your daughter, he would have waited in front of your door, ideally with chocolate and or flowers, ready to apologize and be there as soon as you're ready. I hope you have somewhere else to stay and people to support you, because I'm honestly worried about you when he realizes hormones don't magically normalize. My wife, 33, and I, 35 male, recently married. We decided on a child-free wedding because we wanted people to be able to relax, have a good time, and not have to worry about screaming babies. When asked about this, my mother-in-law told every one of her relatives that they, of course, were an exception, and we would be delighted to welcome their children. By the time we learned of this, flights and hotels had already been booked, and mother-in-law threw up her hands and said, well, what was I supposed to tell people to do with their children? After offering some suggestions about what they could do, some further suggestions as to where she could stick what, and using a few words a lot more harsh than an idiot, my father-in-law stepped in, apologized, and we came to an agreement. We would allow the children to attend, and mother-in-law and father-in-law would pay for all additional headcounts. Everyone would be told that they were responsible for keeping their children under control, and if they didn't, they would be removed. 
This meant babies were to be brought into the cry room at the Church of Crying, children were not to run around the reception, and no part of the ceremony was to be interrupted. I had the absolute right to have someone removed if their children were not under control. Mother-in-law took this to mean that if someone's kids were acting up, she'd have time to address it and fix things. I will admit, people were good for the most part. However, we had a few babies crying in the church. A few kids were being loud, but their parents controlled them and quieted them. Then came our first dance. We were about a minute into the song when I heard people start laughing and whooping. I looked over to see a child had run onto the dance floor and started dancing with her arms in the air. I recognized her as the two-year-old daughter of my wife's cousin. I looked around for her mother and found her laughing and filming her daughter on her cell phone. We finished our dance and I walked over to the venue staff and instructed them to remove her and her daughter from the reception. Two minutes later, my mother-in-law came flying over screaming that she didn't do anything wrong and I couldn't remove her. I replied that she'd broken the rules. This is why I didn't want children there and she had to go. My wife agrees with me but feels bad that her cousin traveled from Louisiana and had to leave the reception. She also hates that her mother is not speaking to us anymore. Her mom says that I'm cruel, evil and hate children. Father-in-law agrees that the rules were broken and I had the right to kick them out but thinks a warning would have been appropriate. I contend that we only get one first dance and knowing that would happen, rather than try to control the situation, her cousin decided to laugh and film her daughter ruining our first dance. Had she gotten her daughter off the dance floor immediately after it happened, I wouldn't have done anything. Not the idiot. The cousin cared more about making a funny video than respecting your first dance at your wedding reception. You could have spent all night issuing warnings, or you could have enjoyed your reception. Instead, you chose to act quickly and then enjoy it. Your wedding, your rules. Your mother-in-law and wife's cousins are major idiots. Your mother-in-law should have told people to ask you and or your wife directly if she was uncomfortable telling them no children to begin with. And you're not wrong for asking the cousin and child to leave. I would be frustrated too if I didn't want children there, made an exception, and then our first dance was ruined by a child. Mother-in-law will come around once she gets over herself. A toddler dancing took the attention off me for a minute so I had them and their mom kicked out. Dear God, you are the idiot. Music was playing and a kid was dancing. That's not running around screaming. You went nuclear when a kid acted like a kid. What a crappy story to have about you on your wedding day.